So was, was, there a, was there a conflict in interest between uh, Christ when he was God and Christ when he was a man? Well, so Christ didn't stop being God okay. when he became a man. Okay. Christ took to himself a human nature and remained divinity. Okay. He didn't stop being divine. Yeah. But his human nature had limitations. One of those limits was a divine knowledge. But remember, your hadith say that the glory of Allah is limited by his veil. Now let me ask you a question. Is the veil according to your beliefs? I don't know about the veil. I you don't know about the veil? Yeah. Is it created or uncreated? I don't know about the veil, I can't tell you. Well, I have just read it to you. I, I told you, I need an explanation. Okay, for my you go go away and read your, you go you go away and study your teachers. Because we have, we have explanations for every verse. Like I told you, you, you said the Salafis think God physically goes above. That's the what they say? Yep, yeah, we, we don't, we believe metaphorically. Do you so believe, believe the Salafis are wrong? Uh, in, in those parts, yeah. On, bro. What was yeah, she? just touching back on the convo you were having with yeah. the gentleman over there. You were saying Islam tries to tell Christians what they actually believe in. Yes. And tries to correct their beliefs. So I was wanting to know what is wrong with that approach. Why do you think that's a that's a bad approach? Okay. okay. So what what I what I what I actually said was, and you might have just slightly missed it because it is a nuanced point. Is it's not that Muslims tell Christians uh, a correction to a false belief. It's that Muslims by necessity have to argue that Christians don't know what they themselves believe. Mm -hmm. Because I'm telling you as a Christian, and every Christian around you will tell you the same, I believe in one God. But the Quran says I believe in three gods. And so Muslims say that I don't understand what I mean when I say I believe in three, one God. Yeah. So what I really mean is I believe in three gods and they have to say that because that's what the Quran what, tells yeah, them. And what's wrong with that approach? Right. That, the reason why that is wrong, bro, yeah. is because in this context, in this environment, right, I've got no reason to lie. I'm not under any kind of compulsion. I'm not under any judgment. You know, I've, I've, got, I've got no fear of consequence, yeah. right? And obviously I'm coming here every Sunday because I believe what I believe, okay. right? Now. Why, the, the first question that I would ask you just to think logically through, yeah. right? And just, I want to have a, a, an honest dialogue with you. Yeah. So I'm asking you to be honest in your answers and not, and not just play the game of argument, yeah, yeah. right? If I believe that there is three gods, yeah. right, I really believe that. Okay. Don't you think that that is what I would be here preaching? Not necessarily. It, it, okay, it, so it, we're doing the Dawah game. Go on then. No, no, no. I'm, Go on. I mean, if you have a, if you have a child who has a father who was a serial killer, yeah, and they were always told from young, from their from their mother, yeah, oh, he was a good man, he was a good man. They would grow up believing he's a good man. Right. So, so, so hold on one second. Yeah. Hold on one second. For your analogy to be true, yeah. you have to pinpoint the the place at which yeah. someone told us we believed in one God. Yeah when actually we believed in three gods. Where, where did that happen? Okay, so, so what, what, I, what I'd ask is, if we look at the context just as it is, if we read the, if we read the text as it is, yeah. we would argue, logically to a 10 year old, they'd argue if there's three parts and different places at different times, this will equal as three different entities. That's not what Christians believe or teach. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I've met Christians who, some will tell you, okay, there are three different parts and in three different places. Yeah, they, they, different they, if a Christian says that, they're speaking yeah. in error. Because that's not but what Christianity they'll, they'll, teaches. But they'll say you're speaking in Arabic. Well, and, and sadly, there, there would be some Christians that naive to do so. But, but the reality is that those are only a minority. Let's actually look at what Christian academics and teachers say. Okay. Because they understand the faith best. Okay. And they're unanimous, in, in, they're unanimous and universal in teaching that I believe in one God. But your argument for it to be true, and I'm demonstrating why it's false, yeah. is, is that you have to pinpoint somewhere in history where Christians believed in three gods, but then someone convinced them that they only believe in one God. Because remember, your analogy was the mother lying to the son about their father being a good man when really he was a serial yeah. killer. So the serial killer bit is analogous to the three gods bit, and the good man bit is analogous to believing in one God bit. Okay. So for your argument to stand true, yeah. Show me where any Christian believed in three gods. Okay, but if we take away, if we take away any religious bias, and we just look at a neutral person reading text, yes, they will tell you there are three parts to, to this Christian to this Christian God. Right. So, so a, a neutral person will tell you. So, so Who's no. So your fictitious neutral person doesn't exist. There are countless examples yeah. of people who have done studies on what the church teaches and what yeah. Christians believe. 
and they publish academic books. I've got a, a, a degree in religious studies, okay. right? Which means that I've studied what Christians and Muslims and other religious groups believe at a university level, okay. right? So out of the two of us, I'm the one qualified to tell you, and I'm telling you okay. every academic book that you pick up written by someone who is objective and neutral yeah. will tell you Christians believe in one God. Fact. They say they believe in one God. Yes, correct. They, they say, but that, that, yes. that doesn't necessarily mean it's right. true. So, so here's the point, here's yeah. the point. Uh, to, to repeat what I said before to okay. the other Muslim, is that for your argument to stand valid, yeah. right? Because right? you're essentially saying that it's not that I... Firstly, do you believe in one God? I do, yeah. Is there only one God? Yes. So when I say I believe in one God, am I making a truth claim that you agree with? I mean, it depends how you define one God. The, I, I the, but define one God as being unique, yeah. singular, and like no other. Do you agree with that? I, I do agree with that. In my right. Context, so yeah. we believe the same thing about God. Great. Now, incidentally, so does Satan. He believes in one God. Okay. Does Iblis believe in more than one God or only one God? One God. Right. So being believing in one God ain't all that, is it? Because Satan's going to hell, isn't he? Okay. Right. So so believing in one God ain't the impressive thing. Okay. Because Satan believes in one God. So believing in one God only makes you as good as Satan. Yeah. Are you as good as Satan? No. I no. Not. Right. I, I I hope I am. I hope <laughs> I'm better than Satan. Right. My point to you is. My point to you is. You're not saying to me that what I believe is wrong. What you're trying to argue and what you can't argue and what you're failing to argue is that I don't actually understand what I believe when I tell you I believe in one God. But I just told you what I believe when I say I believe in one God okay. and you said you agreed with me. Okay, now, uh, so now do you believe in the Trinity? No, I don't. Because right. now, now, now I'll tell you, this is how, this is how we shift the argument to, the, to, the, to the, the more advanced stages. Can you explain the Trinity to me and, it, and how the Trinity equals one God? Okay, I will definitely do that. Okay. But I just want to advance the point one final time to you yeah. that you and every single Muslim that makes this argument are, are, are projecting a conceited lie onto Christians that you've made up about Christians. It's Christophobia. Yeah. Uh, it's a Christophobic prejudice that you're projecting onto Christians based upon the lies you tell one another about Christians. Uh, my, my, let me finish. My, my, let me finish. My on let let, 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 let me stuff. finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Right? Because, because are you a Muslim yourself? I am, yeah. Right. So when a Muslim says a Christian doesn't know what they believe, how bold, arrogant and ignorant that claim is to tell a Christian when he says he believes in one God that he doesn't understand that and actually he believes in three God. I, That's bold, it's ignorant and it's arrogant. I don't necessarily go around to a Christian and tell him you don't know what you believe in. I just, I well, you just, literally just said what's wrong no, no, with this no, idea. No, what I do, what I do You're is, trying to defend it no, right now. No, what I do is I tell a Christian, explain the Trinity to me. They, they explain it to me and I say, that doesn't make sense. That's okay, so let me, let me now explain the Trinity okay, to you. Please. Right, this is what Christians believe about the Trinity. Please. Firstly, the first thing that we believe is that you should worship only one God. Do you agree with that? I do agree, you should worship one God, yeah. Yes. The second thing that we believe about the Trinity is that God is one within himself, i.e. he has one sifat, one essence, and that essence is indivisible, and he's not shared with partners, and he's unique to, him, and he's, and he's unique to himself, and no one else has a sifat, an essence like him. Do you agree with that? I do. But do right, great. So we agree. Is the word you're using. So, yeah, indivisible. Okay. That is what exactly what I said. Okay. I said indivisible. Okay. You can quote me on it. All right. And you can appeal to it later that I said that yeah. because it's going to work in my favor. Okay. Right. Okay. The third thing that we believe about the Trinity. Yeah. Right? Because so far you're a Trinitarian. <laughs> right? I don't think I am. So, <laughs> so far you're a Trinitarian. The third thing that we believe about the Trinity. Yeah is that there is only one God and there is no other gods. There is only one God and there is no other gods. Do you agree with that? I do agree with that. Okay, so the, the first three points of the Trinity you totally agree with. Okay. Right, now I'm going to blow your mind. Okay, blow my mind, please. We believe that the Father yeah. is that God I've just described. Do you agree that the Father of Jesus Christ is the God that I've just described? I disagree with that. You disagree? I disagree with that. Okay, so why do you believe that... So, well, let me finish my explanation okay. and then we'll go back over okay. the points of disagreement. Okay? So we... Now, now we've got the point of division. Yeah. Okay? So we believe that the God that I've just described is the Father. I also believe that the Son is the God that I've just described. 
and that the Holy Spirit is the God that I've just described. And the final point of the Trinity is that the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is not the Father. Now I've explained what I believe, feel free to ask your questions. Okay, so you said the Father is you, not you the can, Son. If he allows you to, you can jump into this conversation. Okay, no worries. If I'll he let, allows you. I'll let you talk. I'll, I'll just finish my... So the Father is not the Son. Yes, the and son the Son is, is not the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit, yes. They're separate entities. Right, so let's come to that, okay. right? What do we mean when we say the Father is not the Son and the Son is not the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is not the Father? What we mean by that is that each person of the Divine Trinity has attributes that are unique to himself. So the Father is unbegotten, the Son is begotten and the Spirit spirates. Okay. The Father doesn't spirate, he's not begotten, the Son is begotten but he doesn't spirate and the Spirit is spirates but he's not begotten, but only the Father is unbegotten. So. Wait, let, let, let me just, let me just pad, pad this out for you. Okay. Because you accept this idea that one can be three and three can be one every single day of your life and you never question it. You've never even thought to question sorry, sorry, it. Don't come, sorry, tell again. You accept this idea yeah. that one can be three and three can be one every single day and you never question it. And you I'm going to demonstrate, yeah. I'm going to give you multiple okay. examples. Okay. Multiple examples. Firstly, Lo, let's understand the logic of maths because okay. that's really important. Yes, I love that. Great. If you count something in one way, and it's one, but then you count it in another way, and it's three, because you haven't counted it in the same way, there is no logical contradiction in saying that it's one in one way, and three in another way. Example, dimensional space. Okay. Right now, you're stood in three dimensional space. Okay. X axis, Y axis, Z axis. Okay. Each axis is distinct from the other two axes, but each axis has the property of being an axis in three-dimensional space. Okay. So in one way, okay. they're all the same thing, okay. but in another way, they're different things. And you experience that every day and you never think to question it. So that, that, that's a rule of measurement. We're, we're, we're talking about being in a different place at a different time. Yeah, we're, right, go, so go on, Let, okay, so, so come to your argument. So if we say, if you're telling me the Son, the Holy Spirit and the Father yeah. are all part of one God, no, I didn't say part. I was very clear okay, not to one, say part. All one thing. I said the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit so all is God. So three of them are God? Correct. Okay, so when the Father... When the, yeah. uh, basically three and one. Just three and one? Yes. Yeah, the three-dimensional space. It's an example of three in one. You experience three-dimensional space. And by the way, it isn't a, just a measurement. It's a reality. You're, okay, okay. you're literally a three-dimensional creature in three-dimensional space, yeah. moving through three-dimensional space and time. And the reality is you never say, you, you don't try to dodge the dimensions. You don't try and step over the dimensions. Okay, yeah. You experience them as one. They're one reality, but the X, the Y, and the Z axes are all distinguishable. Okay, so if we go back to uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Being God. So when the Son was on Earth, yes. where was the Father? Great, the Father was in heaven. Okay, so they're both God, the yes. Son and the Father. Yes. So there was God on earth and God in, 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 in the heavens. Right, so God was on earth, yeah. God was in heaven. Not the that time. there was a God on earth, okay. not that there was a God in heaven. Okay. You see, this is the thing, you're repeating the error of the Quran, you're inserting the a where no a belongs. No, no, I, the, the, the ah is coming from logic. Not no, from, not from it's the not world. logic, it's bad logic. It's, no, it's bad it's logic. Very good logic. It's actually. bad logic. But let, let, I mean, the point, the problem, the problem for you is, yeah. the problem for you is your own hadiths talk about Allah descending to the lowest heaven. Now, but the same hadiths tell you, the same hadiths tell you that Allah is above his throne. So, now, one second, one second, one second, one second. So I'm, I'm if, free, if, Allah, if, Allah, if, Allah, if Allah is below his throne, how can he also be above his throne? So I'm, I'm, I'm free for, Do you reject hadiths? No, so my, my, uh, my school of thought... Are you a Sunni or Shia? I'm a Sunni, but we're uh, Ashari. Ashari. Our, our school of thought is this metaphoric meaning. Right, okay, so, so you're not, you don't buy into the literals. Salafi stuff? We're not, we're not literals, no. Okay, so um, when, you, when you say that Allah descends to the lowest heaven... We, we, we don't mean this literally, because we don't, we, don't we don't put Allah with, a, with, a, with movement, with space. Okay, okay, that's fine. So I will be fair now, and I, I want you to be fair. So I'm going to engage in how you describe Islam. Okay. What I'm asking you to do yeah. is to engage with how I describe Christianity and not to reword okay. 
okay. how I describe Christianity to suit you. No problem. So when I said the Father is God on earth, so the Father is God in heaven and the Son is God on earth, I didn't say at God. Okay. So you shouldn't either. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll take away the uh, from the Thank entrance. you. Okay. So when the Son was on earth, yes. he was God. Yes. And when the Father was in the heavens, he was God. Yes. So the God was in two places yes. at one time. Correct. So when the Son was praying to God, who was he praying to? Right, great question. Yeah. So firstly, there's no problem with the idea that God can be in two places at the same time. The divinity of the Son is the same as the divinity of the Father. It was the Son that was incarnate on earth and it was the Father in heaven. This does not imply some kind of division. So if you've got that image in your mind, get rid of it, because that's not what I believe. It's not what I'm saying, okay. right? And you're engaging with what I say. Okay. So it is the same God, the same divinity that is on earth and in heaven. And that's not a problem. God can do that. God's not limited. We can't do that, but God can. Now, the, 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 in fact, I even forgot what I was going to go on to say from after that. So I'll let you okay, continue. So, all right, so when, when, the, when the son... Oh, wait, was... sorry, you asked who the son was praying yes, to. Yes. Do you want me to answer that, yeah? yeah? Right. So who was the son praying to? The answer is simple. The son was praying to the father. Could he have been praying to himself? No, he was no. praying to the father. Well, he, is, he is part of the... He's not part. He, he is, I never he said is, part. He is, he is God. He is God, yes. He is God, so, so why would he not pray to right, himself? Right, so now, let me, now let's go a bit deeper. Okay. Right, and I want to thank you for Maybe having... For assistance? Uh, now, now let me... Now let me let, 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 let's dig a little deeper. Because... When I say that the Father and the Son are the same divinity, yeah. I'm going to use a picture metaphor, because okay. picture metaphors, people think visually, so we understand visuals better. Yeah. All right? Um, so follow me on this metaphor, okay? okay? Imagine in your mind a, a giant mountain, and inside the mountain is an infinite reservoir of water. Yeah. Okay? okay? And that infinite reservoir of water breaks out on the east side and breaks out on the west side of the mountain, and then doth flow two rivers. Okay. Would it be fair for me to say that there, in, a, in one sense, there's three things here. River A, yeah. the source of River A, yeah. and River B, okay. which also has the same source as River A. Okay. Would you agree that that's fair to my analogy? Okay, yeah. I would, right. Yeah. Would you also say it's fair for me to say that River A, the source, and River B are all the same thing in the sense of they are the same substance? They're all H2O. Is that fair yes, to yes, my analogy? Yes. Right. So when we say that Father, Son and Holy Spirit are not the same, it's analogous to this idea of the river and the, the two rivers and the source. Each river is distinguishable, like each of the persons is distinguishable, but the thing that they are is one and the same. But well, you've just labelled them as two rivers, so you're saying there's more than one river. And if you remember at the earlier point of our conversation, yeah. I said if you count something in one way, yeah. and then you count the same thing in another way, there's no logical contradiction. If we ask the question, to my analogy, what is the substance of the two rivers and the source, the answer is one, H2O. Okay. Yeah, okay. But if we say, well, how many, how many, how many objects do we have here? The answer is three, two rivers and a source. Okay. So when, now coming back to the Trinity, when we say how many divinities there are, how many gods there are, we say one because they all have the same substance. Okay. But then we say there are three because they are Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Okay, so uh, if you were to say, if we were to use your analogy that the two rivers and the, and the source are the same thing, would they, have all, would they all have the same components? What do you mean by components? Like, would, would they all be made of the same thing, have the same limitations, have the same um, um, abilities? All, these three sources, because they're from the same source, yes. would they all be equal? In, in yes, they would, all, they would all be equal in their divinity. Okay, so when, when, when the Son was on earth, yes. did he have the same knowledge as the Father? Yes. Did he have the same knowledge as the Holy Spirit? Yes. So when he was praying to the Father and asking the Father why he was forsaking him, yep. What did he mean by that, if he had the same knowledge? So, so the verse that you're quoting yeah. is when he was asked about the day of judgment and Christ said, no one knoweth the day or the hour, nor the, an nor the son, nor the angels, sorry, nor the angels, nor the son, only the father knoweth. Right, so that's the passage you're quoting. No, that really is the passage you're quoting. No, is it? Yes, it really is. I know this script very well. So now let me, now let me reply to that script, okay? Because okay? this series of questions, every Muslim asks them, I hear them every week. Okay. So, the first problem that you've got there is that in Islam, 
right? You have the same concept of limitation of attributes. The shank, the, the veil of Allah, the veil of light that surrounds Allah, according to your hadiths, limits the glory of Allah, because if it was removed, that glory would burn up the whole of creation as far as Allah could see, which is another way, a metaphorical way of saying everything would be burnt up by the glory of Allah. But that glory of Allah is limited by the veil of Allah, that veil of light, right? Okay. So you have a concept in your religion of Allah limiting his attributes. Now, what we are saying about the incarnation is that the humanity of Christ limits the glory of Christ. It limits the full possession of the divinity from being displayed. And this is true of his knowledge. So when I said, does the son have the same knowledge of the father? I meant it. The son really did have the same knowledge as the father. But in his humanity, did he have access to all of that knowledge? Did his humanity have access to the infinite reservoir of knowledge that God has? And the answer to that is in no. Theory, he should, he should be. No, because of the incarnation. Because when Christ takes on a humanity, he takes on limitations. Limitations in time, limitations in space, and limitations in ability. Remember, you have the same concept of limitations I, I can't, I, in I, I your can't, hadiths. I can't, I can't give you an answer because I don't know about I don't know about the limitations. But as far as I'm aware, from my teachings, God has no limitations. Let me give you another example, okay. a, another picture metaphor, because these help, okay. right? Imagine, imagine you're in the great vacuum of space. It doesn't matter how, maybe you're Superman, maybe you're in a spaceship, however works best for you. And you're looking at the giant plasma ball that is the sun. And you see the sun in all of its glory, in all of its fire and fury, all of its majesty. And then someone draws a curtain and suddenly you can't see the sun at all. But then someone else comes along and they just cut a little slit in the curtain and suddenly the, the light of the sun starts to stream in. Yeah. Is it fair to say that what you're seeing through that slit is the light of the sun? Uh, yes. Is it also fair to say that you're not seeing the sun in all of his glory? Yes. And that is exactly what we're saying about the incarnation. When you see Christ, you're seeing the sun in the limited glory. The knowledge was present with him on earth, in his person, in his body. Well, that's, the pro that, that, that's what I have a problem with. Right, but you don't... Limiting, a, 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 a limiting... Okay, you said the Father and the Son are both God. Yes. So how can one God limit yes. the other God? Right. So firstly, we're not saying that one God limited the other God, because what you've just tried to suggest there is that there are two gods. No, and that's not you, you what we believe. You told me there was a God on earth. Yes, and, and there's God in which is the same God. And I want to make sure that you're crystal no, no, clear I, I, about I, I, that I in your mind. I understand what you mean. You're so so let's say the person in heaven, the Father, the person of the Father limiting the person of the Son. So the, let's get our language the, the correct. Bod, the, the body, the, yes, body, the yes. body of the Trinity right. in, in heaven. So let's be clear. Yeah. Who limits the Son in his incarnation on earth? Father, Son and Holy Spirit limit the Son in his incarnation on earth. It isn't that one acts over the other. It is that the three act together as one. All of their actions are one. So when Christ takes on a limiting humanity, that is not the Father imposing an act on the Son. It is the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit limiting the humanity well, of the limit, Son. Limiting of God does right? not be fit the, the characteristics of God. So why, why, according to your hadiths, is the glory of Allah limited by the shank of Allah? I, I told you, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with that verse. Right. I can't, I can't, it's I can't in your sources. It's in your hadiths. I can't, I can't comment on that. It's I, in I, your hadiths. Your well, no, unless, no, no, just, just think yeah. with me, right? Yeah. I'm telling you that this hadith is there. Yeah. I can show you the hadith with the references if you need me to. Yeah. Just deal with that. You're saying that it is unbecoming for God to have a limit placed upon him. Yeah. So why does Islamic sources put a limit on Allah? I, I, I don't know if they do. I'm not familiar. I, I'm, ju I'm just I'm, right. Unless you're willing to accuse me of being lying, uh, uh, do the thought experiment with me. Imagine that there is this source that says that the glory of Allah is veiled. I don't, I don't do hypothetical. Right, I'm going to get out the hadith then and show you. Fine. Right. Bro, my point, my point to you is, bro, you, you, I can't take... No. I can't take this argument from a Muslim because 
The one you're trying to argue that it doesn't I, befit. I'm not I, asked, I asked you to explain it. Yeah, and what I'm but you then said it doesn't befit the glory of God to have no, himself no, limited. I, I, no, no, logically, 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 the all creating, the all knowing, yeah. cannot put a limit on himself. Right, so I'm going to show to you your own sources say that he does. But, but, like I told you, I'm not familiar with the verse. There's different, there's different uh, explanations for it. I'm going to show you that your own sources say that he does. 2435. Okay. In Surah 20, right. So in Surah 2435, it talks about the light of Allah. Okay. You know about that, right? Okay. Of course you do. But there are hadiths that are attached to that surah, like there are hadiths attached to every surah okay. of the Quran. So in Sunan Ibn Majah, number 195, book of Sunnah, and it's given a great sahih, okay. says this, His veil is light, and if he were to remove it, the glory of his face would burn everything of his creation as far as his gaze reaches. Okay. So that's telling you that the glory of Allah's face is limited by the veil of Allah that is light. Is that metaphorically? Is that uh, Well, you tell me. Oh, I, I told you I don't know about this verse. You can't ask me. Right. So I will only comment if, I, if I'm aware of it. So I would say to you, I, I would... Go back and ask my, I, I, ask my yeah, you come back to me when yeah. you have. Yeah. But my point to you is I can't take this argument from you when your own sources are saying that the glory of Allah is we, limited, we, we, we went, we I went, can't take that we argument. We weren't debating my, my, uh, my beliefs. We were debating whether God can put a... Just but you said it was unbecoming. No, but take me, take me as someone who's, take me someone who's coming to you neutrally with no yeah, religious yeah. ties. You're no not religious neutral ties. and you're not, you're not neutral. You're why, coming why, why as a, neutral. You're coming as a Muslim and that's no, fine. I, I've come to you, I've come to you, I'm from a logic, Bro, logic standpoint. No, no, you've come from a Muslim logic no, and it's often I, illogical. I haven't, I actually haven't. I haven't. Right, I haven't. okay, but let's, let's continue because I want to show to you something again that you have no problem with this idea of limits of knowledge, okay? Because as Christians, we say that Christ became fully human. He became like us in every way, right? As a human being, you will, you will have knowledge that is in your possession that you don't have access to, okay? okay. Uh, 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 there, are, there are two examples that I can give to demonstrate this. Okay. First one, when you come into your house, you put down your car keys, you forget where you've put your car keys, and then your wife asks you, where did you put the car keys? And you go, I don't know. Yeah. And then an hour later, you remember and you go, hey, I remembered where the car keys are. Yeah. That knowledge was always with you. But when you said, I don't know, you weren't lying because you didn't have access to the knowledge. A human, a human weakness. A human exactly. And okay. Christ took on human weaknesses. Okay. Okay. That's what we believe. So, so, so God weakened himself to the, to the level of a human? No. God took to himself a humanity that was weak. We do not say, like, let me give you another analogy okay. to help you, right? Another picture metaphor. If I take a coin and the coin is made of gold yeah. and I've got one face of the coin and two faces of the coin, yeah. imagine that one face of the coin represents Christ's human nature and the other one represents Christ's divine nature. Yeah. And the gold represents his person, the I am, the I that is there, right? Okay. And I get that gold coin and I scratch one face of the coin. You would agree with me that I've scratched one face of the coin and the gold, agreed? Yeah. Right. But if I flip that coin around, the other face is totally untouched, agreed? Yeah. Right. In the same way we believe as Christians, that what happens to Christ's human nature does not affect his divine nature in any way. Okay, okay. But the person of Christ yeah. experiences both the divine nature and the human nature. So, so all of the divine knowledge yeah. was there with Christ, but he didn't have access to it. So was, was, there, a, was there a conflict in interest between uh, Christ when he was God and Christ when he was a man? Well, so Christ didn't stop being God okay. when he became a man. Okay. Christ took to himself a human nature and remained divinity. Okay. It didn't stop being divine, yeah. but his human nature had limitations. One of those limits was a divine knowledge. But remember, your hadiths say that the glory of Allah is limited by his veil. Now, let me ask you a question. Is the veil according to your beliefs? I don't know about the veil. I you don't, don't know about the veil. Yeah. Is it created or uncreated? I don't know about the veil, I can't tell you. Well, I have just read it to you. I, I told you, I, I need an explanation. Okay, my you go, go away and read your, you go, you go away and study your teachers. Because we, ha we have explanations for every verse. Like I told you, you, you said the Salafis think God physically goes above. That's the what they say? Yeah, we, we don't, we believe metaphorically. Do so you believe the Salafis believe. are wrong? Uh, in, in those parts, yeah. Now, now let me ask you this question. Doesn't the Quran say it's clear guidance to all things? Yeah. 
So if it's clear guidance, why can't you guys agree? Uh, clear guidance for people who are, are genuine believers. The yeah. saved sect? Genuine believers, yeah. Are Salafis genuine believers? I, I, need, I, need, I need to uh, understand. Uh, obviously, there's different Salafis come in different forms and shapes. Just generally, are Salafis Muslims? I, I, I don't want to comment. I need to, Would I need you to... give them the salam? Right, so that means you see him as a believer. I, I need to. I need to look. I, no, if you, bro, the, the I know your feek better than you do. If you give your salam to another person, yeah. you're forbidden. It's haram to give salam yeah. to someone who's kafir. So if okay. kufr, sorry. So if you are saying that you'd give the salam to a Salafi, you're saying that the Salafi is a believer. I'm, 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 I'm not the most pious Muslim, so it I, doesn't I'll, matter. I'll, I'll give salam but the, to, right, generally. Yeah, generally. Would you give so. it to me? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fair enough. Fair enough. Pete, you know, it's good. Yeah. I, okay. Wassalamu well, alaikum. Now, 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 let me, let me, um, let me, let me just get this point across to you. What Muslims have heard about Christian beliefs is not what Christians believe. You owe it to yourself. What's your name, bro? Isa. Isa. Beautiful name. Right. Like you owe it to yourself as an honest person to study Christianity with knowledgeable Christians and to come to an understanding of what Christians really believe and not just believe what Muslims say we believe or the lie that Muslims say we don't understand our beliefs. I, I, I can assure you right now, everything I know about Christianity is not from Islam. Okay. It's from my Christian friends. I, I assure you right now yeah. that 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 is n hasn't worked out to be true in this conversation. I know, I, I, I can assure you it is. I yeah. can assure you it is. I, I, I would like, can I meet these Christian friends yeah, of yours? Of yeah, can we, can we meet them? And I, I, I'd like to ask them whether They've taught you that God is in parts. I, I've seen I've seen conflict between them. Great. On whether whether uh, Jesus is this or whether God is this or whether God is in three or God's in one. Or, uh, the answer is usually it's very complex to explain. It's very complex. To explain. Yeah, because lot, not not a lot of the Christians understand it. You got to understand, bro, that that Christians today a lot of them are very ignorant of their faith. Right. So you need you owe it to yourself to sit down with knowledgeable Christians. I've been able to answer every one of your questions. No, so come I, and I study do, with me. You, you've, you've answered them. No, I don't necessarily agree with them. Yeah. But I mean, and, I, and I would like to hear your answers to my questions. Yeah, okay, no, no. So come back to me when you know what the shank is. So you want to know about the veil? I want to know what, how you the you veil, I want to know how the veil limits the glory of Allah. Okay. Right. And because you've been such a wonderful human being, such a, a pleasant person to speak to, I'd like to give you a gift. Okay. So this is for you. Yep. It's a Bible. You. Right, study it. Come back with your tough questions, bro. Yeah. Let's get a coffee at the Marriott. Okay. Let's sit my treat. I'll buy you, <laughs> and we'll sit down, and I'll, I'll happily go through all of your questions. Okay. Lovely to speak to you, sir. You take care. Okay, guys. So what we've just seen is again the dawah script from beginning to end. All the same questions given in all the same ways to a man. All the same questions. Christians, you've got to recognise. Muslims have imbibed a polemical script about our faith. But that polemical script is tripping too many of you up. And it's tripping too many of you up because you have not studied the faith. Your fellowships need to be teaching apologetics. Your fellowships need to be cultivating firmness and steadfastness and strength in belief in our faith as Christians. Because it's only when we do that that we'll be able to take on the dawah script as you've just seen, it can be beaten, it is beaten. And Muslims often attack us upon lines that if you just study it and flip it round on them, their own beliefs stumble and fall. They have all the same problems that they're throwing at us in their religion, but whereas we've thought these issues through, they've never thought it through. The only problem is they've never been challenged on it before. And they've never been challenged on it before, but it's because for nearly 1400 years, they dominated the societies. And so no one dared to challenge them. But now Islam for the first time in its history is being intellectually challenged by Christians and it's being found wanting. For five years, I've been coming to this park. And for three of those years, the Muslim da'i in this park would debate me. But we Christians, Jay Smith, Hatun, myself, Paperboy, Ben, when he was here, before he went and sulked, and other Christians, we've beat the Dayi in all of their arguments. So much so that now they run from us. Mansour won't debate us, Hashim won't debate us, Ali Dawa won't debate us, Muhammad Hijab won't debate us. They all run away. 
Why? Because they know when they face a Christian of knowledge, it damages their dawah and it casts doubt into the heart of Muslims. And that's why they're avoiding us. We have defeated the dawah gangs in this park. And that's all we've done. We haven't stopped the dawah, we haven't defeated Islam, we've just defeated it intellectually. And you've seen that on record in five years.